clear cut. It was in fact it was black and white, and that was about that plexi going in. Some of us have been talking about it for years. Uh, at least two years about the fact that Fife were taking a big risk up in the intimidation fight to moving their fi- their fans behind the away bench when the fans in the front row were within touching distance of the players. We were caught as it's, it's like Stephen was saying. We we kind of saw that something was going to happen, and and I tell you now, with no plexi there and that front row st- front uh, row still having fans in it, there's every opportunity for something to happen again. So what happens then? So how far do you take it if the league just allows? this thing to just go and not have any action taken about it at all, where does it stop? And if it's Fife that's the tail wagging the dog, um, do they just get away with it? Because they threaten to pull out? Because obviously the league want this lovely equal number to, to protect the conference system? I mean, in my, from my opinion, if, if Fife don't want to be in the league that much, then let them go. If, if, if a few hundred quid or whatever it is to install a bit of plexi behind the away bench is the difference between them staying in and, stay, and, and going out, then let them go. Because that's not what it should be about. You shouldn't be spending a few hundred quid on a bit of plexi behind an away bench. Surely the, the, the whole thing should be far more important to them than that. And if it's not, and they are using this as some kind of um, you know leverage against the league, then get them out because... You know, you can't have a rogue a rogue club doing that to the league. It may be something completely different, but the problem is that's how it looks. And the other problem is that without anybody saying anything about it, then we can just let our imaginations run right. Uh, what, if they what, just, we what if they and just moved the away fans back behind the bench again? Well, <laughs> well problem solved. But that was still have to put that, was, that, that, that was solution. Number, but why? Why would you put? Why you need protection from your own fans? Yeah, but I'm just saying. You know, that's how Stephen. I, I, it's like you. Is it just that people have grown so accustomed to these ridiculous things happening in the league that you just switch off to it? I think think it is. You know, it's um, it's it's been so much guff over the years that it's kind of water off a duck's back now, hasn't it? Here we go again. Yep. I don't think that your solution of moving the away fans back behind the away bench is going to be a, an issue, though. I thought it was only for playing games that was the thing, but obviously, the case, but obviously it was a Manchester game that this happened in, so it can't be. Um, I don't think they'll do that because they've obviously they've done it for a reason, as Graham said, up intimidation. Um, didn't really work last season for against the clan, right enough, because we scalped them pretty much every time, but They've done it for a reason. They're going to be very loath to go back to, to what was there before. And if that's the case, if that's the decision that they've made, then DOPs really need to enforce that they install that, that plexiglass in to make sure incidents like that don't happen again. But it's going to be interesting to see because obviously clan five games are, are quite volatile at, at times. And I, th- I don't know, the first time we go up there, obviously there was a... A love hate relationship between the five fans and Ryan Finnerty. So with Coach Tripp being being there now, I don't know if it's going to be as bad as it was in the past. But it's really interesting to see how that one plays out. We've seen how the game against Fife and a, a friendly in Murrayfield went, and I've got a feeling that all games between Fife and Clan are going to be like that this season. So it's just as Graham said, it's one incident away from a big. Uh, cluster of, of things falling into place where an, another incident like that happens so we'll need to see how it goes I'm not overly um, confident that Dobbs are going to make them do anything so it's uh, a case of wait and see and hopefully nothing like that happens again because it could could be worse next time you know than just a couple of punches thrown Jennifer you're the sensible one between us all what's the solution? Well, I think obviously the, the best solution that can kind of suit both is one that's already been said. Put the away fans back behind the bench, remove remove the risk. Um, at the end of the day, the, the plexi is getting put up there or has been like advised to be put up there to minimise the risk of the interaction between the fans and the, the away bench. The way that you sort that is you put the fans behind, if they don't want to put the plexi up, you put the fans behind the bench. My other kind of thought is it, is it a planning permission thought? A, a Well, planning permission that's holding it up? Do you mean it's it's a listed building? Is that what's causing the issue? But if that's the sort of case, they need to be there needs to be some sort of communication stating otherwise, because at the end of the day, the whole point that we're going on about is there's absolutely zero communication about what's actually going on with the situation. And I think that's your whole point, Graham, isn't it? Is there is nothing coming out either the league, the flyers, 
anybody dops, you know, whatever way you want to call the league in this situation. There's absolutely no communication. And I think that's one of the criticisms that was always been aimed at the Elite League. It's like, you know, they'll come out with this stuff and then it doesn't work out. But they just, keep, it's like the Simsy thing, they just keep quiet about it. They don't come out and condemn it or say what they're doing about it or explain to the fans what's going on. You're just, like, left in the dark and try to guess exactly what's going on and that's why we've probably talked for the last 20 minutes to get absolutely nothing right. Well, I, I, well, I disagree. I think, I, you know, I think um, the expression I always use is if it, if it uh, swims like a duck, if it walks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. And this is a duck. You know, it's it's just it's just a mess. It's a mess. And the fact that nothing's been said, even if there was a holding communication to shut people like me up, to say the matter's still being reviewed between the league and the club and findings or, you know, some statement will be issued in due course, but they're trying to work out a solution. The most the most reasonable thing to me is that there's some problem between the club and the arena, and I'm not quite sure that that relationship means, my understanding is that there shouldn't be a problem, but if there was a problem, then, you know, this, this whole thing is, is still being investigated. You know, some kind of holding communication, which we, I would probably probably slate for being complete BS at time anyway, but at least we'd have something. Your point, and, and the point that I made earlier, the, the fact that the fans are supposed to just make do with silence is the, is the saddest thing of all. And as I say, what saddens me is that not enough people are upset about it, because that's not the way this league moves forward, and that's how the league gets away with it, is because not enough people are upset about it. It's not good enough, it should be better than this. But the league gets away with it, and the league thinks it can get away with it because not enough people are concerned and upset enough about it. Yeah, and I think it's a sad indictment on the league because the league, as we said earlier, that you know certainly, and you said Stephen is improving on the ice every year. Um, I really want to get too much into it, but you know we had the criticism of the referees again quite highlighted this week, and it was probably highlighted Jennifer because Sheffield get beat twice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, you know. Paul Thompson, fine, have a go if you want, but I don't see you having to go to the refs when you win on a dodgy decision, you know, so that's how I can't take it seriously. If you really have a problem with the refs, then say it when you get, when you, you get advantage by a situation where the refs made the wrong thing. If you really have a problem with the refs, and, you know, for all I know, you know, it could be Sheffield's, Nottingham's and all that are quite happy to put some more money into it, and the usual suspects are the ones that don't. Because we all know what happened when we had the four-man system and it was optional. There were certain teams. And, you know, I kind of, you, you, Graham, I don't like having a go. There are certainly teams that have got extra money and can afford it. And there are teams at the moment who certainly are saying they're struggling. Dundee springs to mind. Edinburgh is a perennial one that springs to mind um, of, of, of tight budgets. And yes, I understand that. Um what is the answer, though? I mean, you know, do, do you, if, you, if all the teams aren't willing to put money in to help develop the refs a bit better, then don't complain about it. It's the bottom line, isn't it? It is. I mean, the league is. I mean, the league have this pre-season training school or whatever it is for the for, for the officials. We're getting a lot of coverage of what IHUK is doing with officials at this moment in time, bringing new ones in and training. So there's signs that things are getting better. Um the problem is that, and it's a usual story, things only seem to really, really get attention when something happens to Sheffield Steelers because Paul Thompson's talking about it. I mean, Paul Thompson comes out with ridiculous stuff like the league ignores us. The league ignores the issue. I mean, is the guy aware that his boss is the league chairman? I mean, it's a nonsense statement to make. And OK, he's, he's upset at having lost, and he can blame the referees. He also blamed the ice as well. Yeah, imagine yeah, oh my, ice, let's not forget. It's terrible. <laughs> no, the quality of the ice was poor, but yeah. you know he didn't well, mention the fact that it's the same for. He didn't the, um... mention the fact. He didn't mention the fact that it's the same for both teams, and also it's Sheffield's home ice. So yeah. you know, sorry, saw that out with saw that out with your own home, but. This, Paul Thompson constantly does this after a loss. He criticises the officials. Fine, he's not the only one who criticises officials, but then all of a sudden people are supposed to sit up and take notice because it's Sheffield talking. Yeah. Well, you know, talk to your boss, have a word with him and see what can be done about it. That, that would be my opinion. I'm not one, as we know, I always batter on about it. I do say the occasional thing. If without the referees, we wouldn't have a game. You know, um, they can't see everything, especially when there's three of them and there's only one referee. Um, we, we've already had a few things that we could complain about. You know, I think more than anything, yeah, 
coaches and players can get frustrated with refereeing decisions at the end of the day you know we've just got to get behind them give them as much support as we can and uh, and hope things get better and as I said if the clubs want to put more money into it and stop complaining about them then do that um, if you're not prepared to put more money into it then you know then don't you know you, you get what you pay for as they say but the guys turn up week in week out take absolute pelters for both sets of fans because both sets of fans are convinced that they've got purple a bleak orange a bleak black tinted specs on, red tinted specs on. It's just, I don't believe any of them are actually corrupt. I think sometimes they're just, the game's in, uh, over here, uh, and we talk to people uh, who like who, who have been here when they first came over, and, and Brendan even last week saying the pace of the game in the three years he's been here has increased year on year. But we're expecting these guys to do this, one referee with two linesmen, um, and, and just be as good and catch up as, as, as when they're part-timers. Um, I just don't agree. And somebody like Paul Thompson, yeah, frustrating and all that. I don't think it's fair he keeps having a go at, at, at the refs. And as you say, Graham, look at us. You know, we've got to do something about it. Sheffield get beat twice. Um, Stephen, I, I don't know, are you still there or have you hopped off yet? No, I'm still, still here. What, what's your general thoughts about the refereeing situation? Um, they'll... They're in a bad position, aren't they? Because the league, the league may be bringing in new refs and linesmen and and whatnot, but it's still a poor system that they're running in the three man system. It needs to be a four man system for the, before anyone gets any better. You know, it's all very well having more refs, but you, you need you need the new refs to be refing a game with the more experienced guys like like Toby and help who can help them along, talk them through the game and and, and get them up to speed. They shouldn't just be thrown in at the deep end. Um, unfortunately, as you touched on, not every team seems to agree that uh, supposedly that the four man system is the, the way forward and don't want to put money towards it or or what have you. So it's a, another way that the league just isn't isn't keeping up with the the on ice product. You know, um, I'm not going into blaming refs because it's, it's just what happens after a, a defeat by some coaches and and most fans. In honesty, you know, it's. Yep. Um, it's just it's just the way it is. But you'd expect better from coaches, you know. There is there is rules in place from Dop saying you can't criticise refs after a game, um, or on social media or, or what have you. And I know that Tom obviously did in his post match interview. And then there was the assistant coach, I can't remember his name, Jerry, Jerry something. Yeah. Anderson. Um, Anderson, yeah, he said something on Twitter as well, apparently about uh, refereeing. So we'll see if anything happens. In fact, we won't because. Dops have already announced what they're looking at this week, and it's not, not one of them. Yeah. It's not one of them. So, you know, it's it's just what it's going to happen. You've always said about Tom on his book of excuses, and it just seems to be another one that can't be okay. Belfast won both games; we weren't good enough. It has to be the refs or the ice or something, you know. Um, and he was wrong anyway. I've watched the highlights, and it wasn't a high stick, so he can shut up. And he goes home. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer, before we finish, because we're running out of time, is it? And I'm playing Devil's Advocate, Devil's Advocate, and I love doing that because I'm allowed to. Um, it's half the fun going to the hockey, no shouting at the referee, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun to shout at two referees rather than to shout at one person. <laughs> there's two you can shout at to go to Specsavers. <laughs> right, guys, I think unless anybody's getting pressing that they want to add to the to the conversations, um, I think we'll go give, give the hundredth episode. Uh, a wrap up there the way agreed yep yep okay thanks very much everybody and congratulations to the people that won the competition and we'll get the emails and messages sent out to you just to confirm that and hopefully we'll hear back for you in a couple of days and that wraps up another show so thank you for listening we hope you enjoyed the podcast as always we'd like to thank our sponsors Goldstone Wealth Management We'd also like to thank everyone that interacts with us on Twitter or Facebook or at the Arena. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find us on Twitter at Purple Army Pod, or on Facebook, Purple Army Podcast, or on the forum at www.purplearmy.rocks. We'd also like to thank all the players and staff at Brayhead Clan that have interacted and been on the programme in the last hundred episodes. Also the guest presenters we've had, eh, far too many to mention, Graham Murdoch, um, Stephen Hutchison, Raymond Monaghan, Tracy Ross, Neil Hughes, uh, Stuart Crichton, Claire Freeman, we've had David Sims, uh, Mark Parter, Dave Sweeten, anybody I've missed out. Um, and special thanks as well to Stephanie Clark, who does a lot of work in the background 
and we look forward to episode 101.